here we go. Nebraska has a big time game this Saturday versus UCLA with a lot on the line. So in today's video, I'm going to give you a complete preview of that matchup. What does UCLA bring to the table? What does Nebraska need to do in order to win in clinch bowl eligibility in everything else you need to know? So really quick, we have a lot to get into today. Hey, if you're excited about Saturday, I know I am. Hit that like button. And hey, if you're new to the channel or still returning viewer, make sure to subscribe. I post Nebraska football videos every single day, and I'm not slowing down. So if you're a diehard Husker fan, make sure to subscribe. You will be thanking yourself that you did. But without further ado, let's get into it going over Nebraska versus UCLA. And right off the bat, you got to check out the shirt representing UCLA. I'm not a fan or anything. I have no ties to the university. I just own the shirt. But I thought it'd be fun uh, to wear for today's video. Of course, it's UCLA week. So let's get into this team that Nebraska is facing. The Bruins come into this matchup 2-5 and five with two close victories versus Hawaii and most recently against Rutgers that are coming off of a bye week. But a team that's honestly been improving as the season progresses. Their head coach is Deshaun Foster, first-year man. Honestly, a little bit of a controversial hire by UCLA, but I'll say one thing about him. He's a great motivator, and he's a great players coach. He's going to get those guys ready to play. Starting off with the quarterback for UCLA, their head man is Ethan Garbers. So far this year, he's through for 1,500 yards, 65% through the air, eight touchdowns, and nine interceptions. So not a great TD to INT ratio there. But watching him on film, he actually has pretty good arm talent. He can make almost any throw on the field, but he's just not accurate. He's not accurate, and he makes some pretty poor decisions, especially when the pocket breaks down. So if Nebraska can get to him a couple times, they're going to be in for a good game. Uh, but this is one of the worst quarterbacks Nebraska has played so far this year. Definitely the worst we've played in the Big Ten Conference. And hopefully this Blackshirt defense can take advantage of that. Let's get to the running back room for UCLA. Not very good, to say the least. Their head man right there is TJ Harden. He's ran for 180 yards and one touchdown this year. Not impressive, but he also makes some plays in the passing game, has received over 200 yards. So a guy who is a third down back can block, but he just doesn't take handoffs. They also have Jalen Berger in that room. Familiar name to many Husker fans. He was previously with Wisconsin and Michigan State. He has a little bit over 100 yards, uh, averaging three yards a carry. But overall, this is a very underwhelming running back room for UCLA. Now, their offensive coordinator is Eric B. Enemy. As a Washington Commanders fan, and I know a lot of Chiefs fans watch my videos, you are familiar with Eric B. Enemy. He does not run the football. He runs almost an air raid offense. UCLA actually has the second worst run offense in college football. They average only 66 yards per game through the ground. So it's not any surprise on what they're going to do. They're going to try to pass it. Let's get to their wide receiver core. Their leading receiver is actually their tight end, goes by the name of Maliki Matovi. He's actually one of the better tight ends in the country, 250 yards uh, with 20 receptions. Listen, that's six foot six. So he's a guy Nebraska's going to have to worry about. We've struggled against good tight ends throughout the season, particularly in that Illinois game. But, you know, talking about their receiver core, really underwhelming as well. Uh, Rico Flores, Logan Loya, Michael Sturdivant, who transferred him from Cal. Just guys who really aren't producing. They all have less than 200 yards. So they want to pass the football. They just really don't have the quarterback, and they don't have the wide receivers. And that's really reflective of their roster right now. But their receiver core and their quarterback did play well in the last time they suited up, and that was against Rutgers. So Met offense, let's get to their offensive line. As you'd expect, not very good. One of the worst run offensive lines in the country. And they have one of the top top 20 worst in pass protection. They gave up around three sacks per game. So overall, their offense isn't very good. They average only 17 points per game. They convert 35% uh, of their third downs. So not good, but they are improving. They put up 35 points versus Rutgers in their last game. And Ethan Garbers threw for 400 yards, four touchdowns, in zero interception. So it's actually getting better. Although the UCLA, their offense isn't good, it is improving. Hopefully, Nebraska can curb that improvement when they play Saturday. Let's get to this defense for UCLA, starting off with their defensive line. Pretty average unit. 
Uh, their first guy is C. Ali Tupaki, who has 21 tackles, one sack on that D line. He's okay. They have a big nose tackle by the name of J. Tuia. Uh, but overall, they only average about 1.4 sacks per game as a unit. Nothing crazy, kind of middle of the pack. So not really a great defensive line. Their linebacker core is actually pretty, pretty darn good. Actually, one of the better linebacker cores in America. They're led by Carson Swessinger, who's a complete stud. Has 70 ta- 72 tackles already, two sacks, and a forced fumble. He's a guy who's probably going to get drafted in April. They also have uh, Kane Medrano in that room, who's a really good piece. So, honestly, they actually have a pretty good linebacker core. They can stuff the run. Um, they actually have a the 13th best run-stopping defense in all of college football. They only they give up only 98 yards per game. So, shout out to UCLA. They can stop the run. The question is, can they stop the pass? Let's get to their DBs. It's They have a decent defensive back room. K.J. Wallace, 23 tackles, 5 PBUs. They also have Ramon Henderson, who has one pick and three uh, PBUs. But other than that... They give up 270 passing yards per game. That's top 30 worst in college football, but it's not an athlete problem. They got athletes. They got talent there. They can produce when it matters the most, but they really give up a lot of yards uh, in the passing game. So overall, that's UCLA's team. Overall, they're pretty below average in almost every single aspect. They give up 29 points per game on defense. Their offense is not very good either, but they're a team that's improving and they are rebuilding. So it is, there is a chance that they could pull an upset here. As always, I'm going to save my predictions until Friday, but I'm going to give you my keys to the game. How does Nebraska win this game and clinch ball eligibility? Number one, start quick and don't look back. You got to score on the first drive if you are in Nebraska. Don't look back. Never give them the lead. This is one of those games where you got to dominate for yourself. Right, give this team some energy, some confidence going into the bye week. Clinch bulls, you already get the monkey off your back. I want the Huskers to dominate, but you got to take the lead early. Number two, this defensive line needs to have a good day. Get to the quarterback. Ethan Garbers cannot handle pressure, he can't handle the heat. You got to have a guy like Ty Robinson have a good day. Jamari Butler, get some sacks. Number three, establish the running game. UCLA actually has a really good run-stopping defense, but if you can shut that down and actually start running the football, that's the bread and butter of this offense. Everything else will start thriving if you can run. Number four, Dylan Ryle puts some confidence back in that young man. He's mad after missing that touchdown uh, pass to Jamal Banks versus UCL versus Ohio State that would likely won us the football game. So give some confidence to that young man. Hopefully he has a good day, but give him the football. UCLA is a poor pass defense. Hopefully, Ryola can exploit that. Last key of the game, take care of business. Nebraska opened up at about a 10-point favorite. Everybody's expecting us to win. Prove those people right. Let's get it done versus UCLA. So, you got to win this football game. UCLA is an inferior opponent. If you lose, oh my goodness, heads are going to roll over the bye week. But if you win, let's be happy. Let's celebrate. We're going bowling. I can't wait for Saturday. I hope you can't wait either. All right, guys, let me know down below. What are your thoughts about this game, Nebraska versus the Bruins? Do you think we win? What's your prediction? Let me know in the comment section. Hey, if you made this far in the video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. And as always, folks, go be a grad, go on better rule, and see you in the next one.